Hello everybody and welcome back to uh, Insane Brett Gaming. This is this week's News Friday where I talk about all week's gaming news, gaming topics, uh, etc. and uh, in the industry or at least of the stories that I can find or especially the ones that I find in particular quite interesting and there is a lot to say. Uh, first and foremost the Xbox One X launched and uh, very successful. Loads of people posting pictures and you know the Scorpio edition. Some people's um, <coughs> deliveries did not arrive and they got it quite late. A lot of uh, complaints to Amazon.com um, didn't deliver on the day it was supposed to come out, even though people had um, ordered at a months in advance in itself. But hopefully those people get their console anyway, and it was a bit of a rush on, uh, which is ironic, to be honest with you. And it is a Christmas build-up coming up. I know we're a month away, but at the same time, I can understand to a little a point, uh, a little bit there. Um, but yeah, let's get on straight away. Uh, I have an opinion about the Xbox One, and I will give you that in a little bit. <sighs> Um, or maybe I should just do it now, for example. Well, actually, no, let's read the story, the main story. So, basically, the main story in today's News Friday is the Xbox One has launched. However, um, there's a little bit of uh, things that I hadn't really heard up until now, but um, I'll read the, the, the quote uh, reference. Uh, after much anticipa uh, anticipation, Microsoft has officially launched the Xbox One X, giving players access to 4K gaming and huge visual upgrades to existing titles, but some players say they are unable to enjoy the new hardware, as their consoles are dying on them. Some Xbox One X owners are writing on social media that their consoles have just stopped working or haven't started working in the first place. Ouch, out the box. 450? Jesus. One owner complained that after plugging in the console, <coughs> in, they, they plugged in the console, they pressed the power button and nothing happened. The console wasn't booting, it didn't even make the boot sound, just silence and nothingness. Even unplugging the console and changing the outlet do not solve the issue. <coughs> One Xbox X player said they played for on, they played on for two hour two or three hours uh, before powering it down and went to do other things. When I try to turn it back on, it doesn't start now. <coughs> wrote the player. Another user said that they had been playing Quantum Break when their consoles just shut off like it was a power outage, no warning or anything. The controller was just flashing. It's unclear exactly what is causing the issue. The site reports of Brit Xbox One X console state that the console stopped working out of nowhere, that it was totally unexpected, and they had nothing. There was nothing to indicate technical issues, although the Quantum Break player did say their Xbox One X became quite warm in the room it's situated in. Is uh, the, the room it's situated in is cool? The PS4 Pro also works in the same room with no issues, so environmental temperature is unlikely to be the culprit of this specific case. It's also unclear exactly how widespread the issue is. There have only been a few reports about the Xbox One X problems so far, and it seems unlikely that a lot of players have been or will be affected by this. Rather, the vis visibility of the console just means that it's easier for their stories to come to light as the Xbox 360 famously suffered from the red ring of death. Players are just more vigilant about the technical issues with Microsoft consoles. <coughs> it is worth noting that many new consoles face usually a small amount of technical issues. For example, the small amount of Nintendo Switch launch units which were affected by the blue screen of death, and it seems likely to be a small batch of Xbox One units that are 40, but in any case, those of you affected by this should um, get a replacement from your retailer wherever you purchased it. Now, of course, when any particular... Now, essentially, that's the story. Um, now, when any particular uh, console launches, you're always going to have a few uh, glitches and hitches here and there, unfortunately. Um, it's just the way it is, and no, my luck, if I had the Xbox One X, it would be one of my fucking, you know what I mean, out of all them that I could have bought, it would probably be mine, because that's the kind of luck I have. Um, so the Xbox One that, uh, X launches, and it gives you, um, uh, a, a most powerful console, basically, in the industry, blah, 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 very interesting, I'm a primarily a PlayStation 4 player. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't go out and buy one, having said that I don't have the money to buy one, even though in the past, and even till this day, I still criticise the fact that, and I quote, there's not enough games for it. And I say that and I still want the X, well yes, because I like the updated version of the consoles, uh, etc, etc, right, that's my own preference, that's me. But there still is a fundamental flaw with the fact that they haven't got enough games, which I'll get to in a little bit as well. Um, now part of me was a little bit smug with the, hmm, it hasn't really working, but at the same time, I feel bad for them because they've just forked out £450 uh, for a console that essentially don't work. Now, to, um, now of course, you need a 4K um, television to actually to run these, and I will say this. 
I myself am going to be buying a 4K television in the future, and it has to have uh, not only 4K, but HDRC or whatever. Uh, a lot of people have uh, got a 4K television, and they've plugged it in, and they're saying that their console can run, but it can't run on specifics what it's supposed to, even though they've got a 4K television. I don't think that a lot of them have HDRC. They might be the older version of a 4K television. So when you are buying a 4K television, make sure you've got the HDRC or whatever. I'll be doing more research on it as well uh, when I buy mine in a couple of months' time. Um, you know, and then we really, I don't, I won't be buying the Xbox One X, but I'll be getting the 4K television, then I'll have the S, the Xbox S, and then I'll have the PlayStation 4 Pro as well to play on. So, be sure, uh, to check your 4K television, um, if you are buying an X, if you're specifically going for that realm, you know, of what it can run, etc., etc. Um, another part of the, another thing about the Xbox One X, so one of the fundamental things, the fact that it hasn't got many games, right, they've got Lucky Tail, Gears, Halo, uh, they've probably got, uh, I don't know what else they've got, that, 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 that other game, I can't remember what they called it now, the, the weird one, I think there's number two coming out with skateboarding or something, I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, and they've got Cuphead, which I will be playing at some point as well, so they've, you know, they need more exclusives, and like I said, I'll get to that in a little bit, uh, because I've got, um, a quotation from, um, oh man, Phil Spencer, about that. Um, also, the thing about the Xbox One X, about when they make your, the games even better, when they upgrade them, the patches for these games, because essentially the games that you already have, like you say Halo and Gears, the companies have to release patches to upgrade the games for this console, to make them visually beautiful and X, Y, and Z, it needs to, to be patched. And this depends on the developer. So if you've got the Xbox One X, it doesn't mean all your games are going to look beautiful, or they are going to vary, which is unfortunate, because... <clears throat> Basically, it's how much effort and time the developer wants to put into his games, making it look brilliant for the Xbox One X. They may not bother. Uh, the one game might look absolutely stunningly beautiful, and the other one doesn't even have it or is mediocre, and you feel kind of disappointed in that. So that's a concern for me. You spent money, you expect a beautiful game, but again, it's based on the developer, and um, results will vary from developer to developer, developer to developer, you know what I mean, in, in the industry, which is kind of disappointing. Um, I understand it, but it's kind of frustrating considering the fact that you spent all this money for the most powerful console, and yet the certain games aren't going to be upgraded, or it's going to be inconsistent, which for me is a bit of a flaw, in my opinion. Uh, or, like I said, even if they are going to do it, it's going to be inconsistent. Um, like I said, getting back to the... Um, the quotation from uh, Phil Spencer, Microsoft Exec VP of Gaming, apparently, or some whatever that title. Uh, <sighs> this quotation is kind of annoying as hell. He basically says, <clears throat> a quote from him, is that we will be doing more for third-party games. Um, they're going to invest, uh, Microsoft investing more in first-party games uh, by buying up studios or creating their own. I have no problem with you buying up studios or creating your own. The problem is for me... Well, and here's a quote, I'll give you it in full, uh, of buying up studios. We need to grow, and I look forward to doing that. Okay, Our ability to go create content has to be one of our strengths. We haven't always invested at the same level. We've gone through ups and downs in the investment. So essentially, what you've done is, you've, you've put a lot of effort into the console in the beginning but you've not worried about the games. Now, the quotation, I, I just want to break that down. Let's go through that again. We need to grow. Well, obviously, I agree with that sentiment. You look forward to doing that. Interesting. Our ability to create content has to be one of our strengths. Well, no fucking shit. Because you've only got Halo and Gears, and like, well, we're Cuphead, and even that's a niche, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing because it's interesting and different. No matter what console it was on, I was going to play it to a point, as long as I could get my hands on it, and I will. So, that's a bit of a positive there, but that's one game. We haven't always invested at the same level, we've gone through upstairs with investment. Haven't invested at the same level. <sighs> I don't understand it, because essentially, you don't even have to be a person who's into computer. You look at anyone in your family who's not a gamer, any one of them, and I bet you they've given Microsoft money. They've bought Windows 10 for their PC, or for their college work, or their, their work. You know, or whatever. It is ridiculous. How so the money's always been there for Microsoft, but they haven't invested in, in, in the gaming section of it. It's just unbelievable to me. Um, uh, primarily, my issue of it is is you should have done this 30, uh, in 2013 when it, or whatever before the console came out. And now you're like saying it now. So, so say it was like uh, when, when it came out before 2014. Uh, so just call it 14, 
15, 16, 17, four years, okay, four years, we're going on to a fifth year, and yet you still have really nothing for it, you see, you see the problem there, it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous really, I, I just, the, the, the statement is unreal, um, I, I don't know what to say about it, I mean, Xbox owners in general, I'm, I'm tired of speaking about it, but then you get this, this quotation from him, You'd think, you come on man, you should have done this ages ago. I've got no problem with buying studios. It's uh, my next story in actual fact. Um, we have, uh, where is it now? EA, okay, is my next story. Uh, EA to acquire Titanfall developer Respawn. Now, if you don't know, Vince Mappella is the creator of um, Call of Duty. And he got ousted by his company or whatever, and then he didn't get a lot of money. They, he said that he got money, but he said um, I think he was trying to sue them because they said they held back revenue from him, and he should be entitled to it. Uh, whatever, he got ousted or he lost it. I don't know. Whatever, he's now gone. And do uh, Call of Duty, so he started his own company called Respawn Entertainment, which is the Titanfall developer we know today. Uh, and also, a new Titanfall is in the works. Uh, Electronic Arts says it plans to acquire Respawn Entertainment, a studio behind Titanfall franchise. Uh, EA uh, announced the purchase as well as a new in-development Titanfall game in a press release. Well, if you're going to buy a studio, you obviously go with their, the particular uh, games that they already make uh, for that IP. You know what I mean? Uh, and you, you keep that series running uh, because that's why you purchased it. You know, for any particular developer like Halo, you know, free for free industries acquired you know, certain <coughs> aspects of that franch uh, franchise, actually. Maybe that's a bad example, um, because they, they didn't get swallowed by, uh, Bungie didn't get swallowed. But at the same time, um, you go on with the, the actual games that they got, you know, when any uh, particular company is purchased. According to the official announcement, EA will pay $151 million in cash, and up to $164 million in long-term equity in the form of restricted stock units for Respawn. In addition to a new Titanfall game, Respawn is working on an untitled game set in the Star Wars universe and a virtual reality first-person combat experience for the Oculus Rift. <clears throat> We've seen the first-hand world-class caliber of Respawn as a development studio with incredible vision, deep talent, and inspiring crea creative mindset, said Andrew Wilson, CEO of Electronic Arts, in a release. Our long-time partnership is grounded in a shared desire to push boundaries and de deliver extraordinary and innovative uh, new experiences for players around the world together. We've brought this to life in the Titanfall franchise and now with the Respawn team joining EA, we have exciting plans to accomplish even the most amazing things in the future. We started Respawn with the goal to create a studio with <clears throat> some of the best talent in the industry and the top developer of innovative games, said uh, Vince Zampella, sorry is his name, I was called Vimpella, whatever, CEO of Respawn Entertainment in a statement, we felt that now was the time to join an industry leader that brings the resources and support we need for a long term success while still keeping our culture, creative freedom, EA has been a great partner over the years and Titanfall 2 and we are excited to combine our strengths. This is a great step for Respawn, EA and our players. In a letter posted on the Respawn Entertainment uh, Respawn website, Zampella uh, <clears throat> was a bit more candid about the acquisition. While it isn't necessarily going with EA it made a lot of sense, Zampella said with Titanfall and Star Wars, EA has been a great development partner and supports us and doesn't interfere with our process for making games or studio culture. EA will provide us with more resources, assess, uh, access to new technologies and expertise, and we can tap into that. will help us make better games and Respawn will retain some same creative freedom and culture. We've also had, we've been talking closely with the leading leadership <clears throat> at EA, and we will share the value and vision for the future of a developer-focused company that puts the players first. Respawn Entertainment was founded in 2010. Former members of the Call of Duty developer Infinity Ward, the studio's first two Titanfall games were published by EA. And there you go. So they're going to be bought up by EA, they've acquisitioned it, and they're going to leave them with their creativity and freedom to do what they want, and just basically write the checks, and give them access to new technologies, um, you know, <clears throat> making making them, uh, pff, sorry, let me switch back to my camera, <clears throat> giving them the freedom, and that's exactly what Xbox should have done, uh, for example, they should have went and acquired Respawn Entertainment, um, 200, 300, I think overall, I read in another aspect of the news, it was 500 million dollars overall, uh, 500 million isn't a lot, and I say that based on the fact that the amount that ga some games uh, can make, we look at uh, Destiny made 500 million in a week, they had their money back, um, 
you know, not every game is a success, but when you've got something like Titanfall or whatever, you know, EA have got enough money. Or, or so, let's bring that back to Microsoft. Microsoft themselves have got enough money to do that and buy studios, and they should have been really looking at that. Maybe come in at the 11th hour and try to snap that up and make that Titanfall uh, exclusive to Xbox One once again, because I think Titanfall 2 is on the PS4, uh, which is very disappointing. Again, they lost more traffic to their console. It's just, it doesn't make sense. You can go with indie to a point and it'll be cheaper and you'll have loads of little games, but it's not really interesting to me personally. I want big budget exclusives um, like Halo and Gears, um, you know, uh, even by the Doom franchise or something. You know, something, or even the Knack team, make something big, make something interesting and um, a bit of a niche and go with multiple titles with that uh, to a point. But make them be out there uh, where, you know, people are going to want to come to the Xbox, you know. And I think uh, Xbox players actually deserve that. And I, f I wish they would do that. And they should have been doing that for, like, the past two or three years. It's kind of disappointing to me. I'm looking at my games right now. And, I mean, I know Xbox went out and got, you know, um, Metal Gear and a bunch of other games like that. But that's not really good enough because you're still competing on a level with PS4. So that's not really great. Um, I haven't got too many games, to be honest with you, right now. Um, but you know what I mean? Like... Even the Automator, that would have been a cool game, or whatever. Or even branch out to some more Japanese games, like which are very, like, <clears throat> you know, I know a lot of PS4 seems to do a lot on the uh, Japanese games. I see a lot of them on there. I don't personally play them, but, uh, you know, go with something to bring people in, because there's not enough on the Xbox, is my point. Uh, that's what they want, and I think if, you know, I'm pro probably, I'm going to say I'm looking for an excuse to play my Xbox uh, One, you know what I mean? Uh, and there's just not enough on there, at least for me. <clears throat> Alright guys, um, so that covers the Xbox One bricking it, <laughs> it covers uh, Xbox's future, it, uh, I've covered the EA uh, acquiring Respawn Entertainment, uh, oh by the way Resident Evil has sold 1.1 million um, games by the way, I believe now. With the sale one uh, coming up recently. I think I've got one or two more stories uh, to talk about and um, that would be it for this week, so stay tuned, hold on, give me two more minutes guys. CD Projekt Red have basically come out and said that Witcher 4, if it does happen, will be with a tire, an entirely new character, which I understand his story is now in you know, a particular over. I never did play the game, but I know that they're legendary games or whatever. Like I said, they're just not my kind of games. I said this in the past. Um, so if it is, uh, if they do go back to Witcher 4 or make a Witcher 4, sorry, it will be with a side character or an entirely new different character, uh, brand new character or whatever in that particular universe, or maybe even a spin-off game as well, or I'm not sure if it's, they're saying the story is a spin-off, I don't know, either way, it'll be interesting to see what happens, I know there's millions and millions of fans of you out there of that particular game. Uh, Call of Duty World War 2, basically, uh, one, it was going to be Advanced Warfare 2, um, but Call of Duty, or I think it was, uh, they said to Sledgehammer, look, we want to take the game back to its original roots, and uh, we knew, they basically said, <clears throat> well, they've got a quotation from them directly here. We knew Sledgehammer game, uh, Sledgehammer would become historians and that they would tackle it with authenticity, authenticity, sorry, uh, give the tremendous care and we also knew that they would capture the unspeakable scale of World War II. That was Eric Heisenberg, Activision CEO. So yes, Call of Duty is out, it is World War II. I will be playing it at some point. <clears throat> Trust me on that. Um, probably near the Christmas period. I don't know. I'm going into a shootout with my next playthrough as well. And we will be kicking Nazis' ass. That's interesting. But it ain't Call of Duty. What's it going to be if I'm facing off against Nazis? Well, um, you know, I'll announce that via Instagram or whatever. Um, in the next couple of weeks, the game looks absolutely solid. It looks brilliant. I have... Uh, Hit and miss with the online because some people like the uh, World War II uh, with the uh, bolt actions, uh, Springfield '98. You know when they have to pull back the thing and you, you know, one shot and it, whatever. It's it's brilliant. I love it. Uh, it's an interesting uh, type of gameplay or you know guns different from what we usually see in the many different Call of Duties. I'm sick and tired of the futuristic shit. It bores me. Um, it's not real to me. It, it really isn't. It just doesn't resonate with me, and laser guns, and laser beams, I'm like, I, it's too much fake shit for me at the same time, so I'm definitely going to be looking forward to playing it, uh, the story uh, in particular, obviously, um, online I'll dabble in, I, I, like I always do, I don't do it a lot, but I will dabble in that, um, see, <clears throat> you know, obviously I'll probably record that as well, to show you guys how I do, 
I'm going to suck at it. I know I will. But I'm definitely looking forward to playing Call of Duty. Um, I've got one or two more stories, guys, and then that's going to be it for uh, this week's News Friday. I think. Hold on. All right, guys. My last uh, two stories are uh, basically relating to microtransactions and Assassin's Creed. Uh, but I'll get to um, <coughs> microtransactions in a little bit. Assassin's Creed has basically uh, been launched and uh, it looks absolutely brilliant. I will be picking it up at the same point at some point and doing a playthrough. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to be a long playthrough. I know. I'm imagining if my previous one was 45 videos, a half an hour each, but I changed the new system of an hour playthrough, 20, 25 hours. It's going to be uh, 25 videos overall. Uh, when I actually do start playing that, it's assuming it's a 35, 40 hour playthrough, uh, depending. But basically, it is selling at double the, uh, the uh, Syndicate actually sold. Um, so essentially, they have more time. And to be honest with you, I agree with that. I think it should come out once every two years uh, to a point because then that way we have a break from it. We're not hounded every year to go and buy the new series, buy the new Assassin's Creed, buy the new Call of Duty, Battlefield, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it, it lets the game set in motion its own fan base. People get to spend time with it. People get to, You get to support it. It gets some love from the community of, like, just say Battlefield, Call of Duty. They get their love of the game. Assassin's Creed in particular... I'm happy that I haven't played Assassin's Creed in quite a while, so I'm anxious to get back out there, and it is an interesting universe in itself. Um, speaking about microtransactions, uh, Take-Two Interactive, the creators of um, <coughs> Red Dead Redemption, uh, says that microtransactions will be a part of the... Um, oh, God. Part of uh, their ongoing... If I can just find a quote here. Hold on. I got a quote from directly from the guy. Uh, he says, <clears throat> "We aim to have a recurrent consumer spending opportunities for every title that we put out in this company. It may not always be an online model. It probably won't always be a virtual currency model, but there will be uh, some ability to engage in an ongoing basis with our titles after release across the board." Strazik. Zenslik, CEO of Take Two Interactive. There's been a lot about microtransactions in the past couple of weeks, and I have to, I, ha, I have an opinion on it. And I think I've said this to you before, and I'll say it again. There's a difference between a hardcore gamer and a casual gamer. Now, the hardcore gamers like me and my friend, we are desensitized to it. Um, and basically, for every game that I play with FIFA, um, with their um, FIFA Ultimate Team, if you're a fan of it, you're a fan of it, you buy them, that's your choice. Uh, but that is microtransactions, essentially, so you'll do that, okay? Then when you go into Call of Duty, they'll say, oh, do you want a uh, double XP weekend, here's a new map pack, here's a new zombies, uh, do you want this new gun, do you want this new skin, blah, 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 and it's ongoing. And I notice that, and it's a selling pitch to me every single time. So every game that I play it has that. So I'm desensitized to it, and I'm used to it, and, I, and do you know what I do? Fuck off. I don't fucking have nothing to do with it. I don't pay them any money. Not that it's they're bad games. I just simply refuse to pay X amount of money for something I feel should have been already in the game. If I love the game that much, uh, then I will go and do it. Now, that's a hardcore gamer, and we know what's going on. However, casual gamers, the kind of guy that buys a PS4 or an Xbox One and just plays Call of Duty all day, he will buy everything. And I understand that. That's the way it's going to go. Um, so these practices are not going to go any go away anytime soon, and I don't expect them to. Um, not that I want them there, but I, I think it's just a business practice of getting more money out of your consumer with your casual hardcore, but especially those casuals. Um, for example, in terms of EA, they make um, a few billion, I think it's one billion, literally one billion pounds plus off of the FIFA Ultimate team. That's without even going out, you going out and buying the base game. So if the profit it ain't going away any anytime soon. Um, it's, none, uh, it's a way of getting more cash out of the game in itself. Um, which I don't blame them for doing in some aspects, but, it, but in other aspects it becomes uh, beyond a joke because, like I said before, in every single uh, map pack that's created and everything, hasn't been done four months after and then given to you. It's already in the actual original budget. So essentially those maps or whatever could be, um, what do you call it, could already be in the game. Call of Duty is designed, uh, for example, you play those particular games and then like every four, two, three months something comes out, you want to buy them because you're bored of the same map. So it's like a, it's a structure. They only give you a, a taste and you want to you want to get more of it and more of it. And that's why you end up buying the season pass or whatever to just download them. Having said that, it comes up to about £80 overall uh, for just one game, which is a bit ridiculous. But that's how they make their money. Uh, the, well, they make their money off the base game, but they make up the markup. You know what I mean? Everything's just profit, profit, profit for DLC. 
it is what it is. I don't mind paying for story DLC um, if it's going to enhance my experience of the game. If I love the story that much, then I will do it. Um, you know, like an, an error, an aura of it. So, like, we've got this game, it ended, and then we get some, maybe some a story with a side character or something interesting to enhance my experience in the universe. Like, you know, it is what it is. Um, it doesn't happen in every game, and that's fine, but a lot of it mostly, as I said, is um, microtransactions for the, um, you know, little skins and God knows what. <clears throat> you know, so that ain't going away anytime soon, but my advice to you is literally only support the games that you love and, and, and are really enjoying and play consistently so then you're uh, supporting a developer or a company or a game that you actually love and everything else that don't mean that much to you or you're not into or you just play it once and then like you play the story and get rid of it and you're and like well it was okay um, but if you're like going to play certain games over and over again and you're going to play it for the rest of the year like Call of Duty like FIFA then I, I and you want to support them or you like the FIFA Ultimate Team or you want the map packs and by all means you know no one's going to judge you for that at the end of the day it doesn't affect me as a, uh, a customer slash consumer because I just won't do it. You can throw anything you want at me uh, to do with that and I would just say, well, at the same time, it's my choice whether I buy it or not. Um, it is what it is. Uh, and sometimes I just flat out refuse even though that there's content that I know should be in the game. I just go, well, fuck it. It isn't in there because they, you know, they've taken it out so I just won't buy it because uh, that's what they want. Um, it, like I said, it, it depends on you and I cannot say, you know, give you, I, I can't, you know, demand that you buy or don't buy this, that, and the other, you'll make your own choices. Uh, anyway, guys, that's about it for, oh yeah, wait there, hold on, one more, one more thing, one more story, before I was about to sign off, um, shit, what was it, oh yeah, the PS, uh, the Ubisoft, um, executive or something, a Ubisoft, uh, guy came out and basically said that the PS5 and the Xbox One, no, sorry, the PS5 and the next Xbox might be coming out in about two years' time. They expect, this is an industry insider, a leader, a company, a guy who owns a company or whatever, has said that he expects them to PS4, a PS5, and a new uh, a console from Xbox to come out in two years' time. He is expecting that. Um, and also, I found out, uh, also going back to the Xbox thing, that the Xbox was in development, the Xbox One X was in development before the Xbox. That's fucking bullshit. That is complete bullshit right there. Um, so what they've done is they've developed it, made made sure that there was another console, give you a baseline, and then said, and then like two or three years later, said, oh, here's the next one, um, uh, to to basically match their competitor to to a point. That's what they've basically done. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed at that. I just found that out, and I'm fucking annoyed. Um, as for the um, the two years, I don't think that's too bad. I'm not going to regret buying a PS4 Pro or the Xbox One S. I probably won't upgrade to the X now based on that assumption. Um, and then I will just play my games now. I'm happy with the consoles I've got until they break. Um, I've got insurance on both of them anyway, so that should set me up nicely. When the new consoles do come out, I will sell both my consoles or whatever, or whatever. I don't know what happened. Now. I'll sell one of them and I'll buy the next console out. Anyway, guys, I hope that was a, a piece of interesting news. It was mostly Xbox and sort of orientated this week, uh, but there's some interesting information out there. Hope you uh, liked some of my opinions. You may disagree. Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, will you be buying the new Xbox in two years' time? Will you be even bothering with the X now, but you know there's a new one possibly coming within two years' time? Um, <clears throat> please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Don't forget to buy T-shirts if you're interested in my content or you're a fan of mine for food reviews. Food review is coming out tomorrow, by the way. And, uh, you know, I have a new T-shirt on... November 21st of me and the meme or whatever and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.